The object of this experiment is to examine a perfectly inelastic collision between a steel ball and a ballistic pendulum. The ballistic pendulum consists of a cage attached to an arm that can rotate. A spring-loaded gun mounted to the apparatus is used to fire the steel ball into the cage. The collision of the ball with the cage is perfectly inelastic because the ball remains in the cage after the collision. Wear protective glasses until all groups have completed the experimental procedure. Always place the cage on the ratchet before loading the gun. Use two hands when loading the gun because the spring is very stiff, and stand behind the gun when loading it. The ball leaves the gun at a fairly high speed, so keep your hands, face, and body away from the gun, and be sure that no one is in front of the gun when it is loaded or fired. Analysis of the collision of the ball in the cage requires determining the vertical height through which the cage and ball rise after impact. Using the orange center of mass pointer on the side of the cage and the base of the apparatus as references, measure and record the initial height of the pointer. Now fire the ball into the cage and measure and record the final height of the pointer. To analyze the collision of the ball in the cage, you must also determine the speed of the ball when it leaves the gun. This is done by firing the ball into a wooden box placed across the room from the gun. Position the box so that the ball lands in its center. Once the box is properly positioned, tape a piece of white paper into the box and cover it with a piece of carbon paper. Once that has been done, place another piece of white paper on top of the carbon paper, but do not tape this. Fire several shots onto the paper in the box. Carefully remove the carbon paper, but not the white paper that was taped to the bottom of the box. Measure the average range, the distance from the center of the ball on the unloaded gun to the center of the distribution of impact points. Make a reasonable estimate of the uncertainty in this measurement. You must also measure the vertical distance through which the ball falls during its flight. By also measuring the mass of the ball and noting the mass of the pendulum cage stamped on its side, you now have enough data to completely analyze the ball cage collision.